Well, we've grown our weep nitty bong. I'm Engineer Hoist, and welcome to our weekly news stream. It is the first stream of 2020. Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, especially to everybody who's in the chat already. We've got uh, First Monk, uh, Bumblebee, Big D, uh, let's see, Cool Awesome Boy. I saw Oktar here earlier, uh, Wolfman, a lot of familiar faces. Thanks for following us over here to Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, we do record these live on Twitch now. Uh, so uh, the link is in the description, so you can head on over there to do that. And um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get over to the news. The uh, news is actually for the uh, event is actually pretty short this this week because uh, we've got uh, a very familiar event. Uh, and that's a good thing because we did this last year. We're going to do it again this year that uh, we're going to take a look through the uh, past year of 2019 and look at all of the fun stuff that we had a chance to uh or, well, it depends on your opinion. I thought it was pretty fun uh, to go see all the stuff that was added in the game. So we'll do a little retrospective. And then I do have some red alert crystals to uh, crack open when we get done with all of that. I did open four. haven't got any red alerts yet. Uh, so this weekend's event is called Loud and Clear. And... You can win 3,000 Prime Core Shards, 30 Shard Boxes or Shard Crystals. It kind of used both terms in the uh, newsletter, so I'm not sure which one they're actually going to call it. And up to 60,000 Spark. It's a pretty standard Prime Core event, which is good because uh, we kind of skipped one month. And it's good to see those coming back because uh, I, I need some Prime. I'm still missing some Prime Cores, as I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are missing some Prime Cores. So it's good to get some uh, Prime Core uh, shard events going again and if you've already got all of the prime cores or even if you don't you can also use these for uh, g metal uh, power cord chips as well uh, this is as usual uh, for these types of events an individual totalizer it starts on the usual friday and stops at the usual monday start and stop times 30 prestiges and triple xp now here, and uh, to participate, you have to be at Headquarters Level 4. You don't have to be in an alliance because it is an individual event. And you, you, know, you battle the way you usually do. You hit that yellow event button, go win the battle, get your points, and collect your prizes. So now, um, here's where it gets a little, little interesting. The newsletter shows that it was the standard battle zones. However, these types of events usually you... Uh, have the flat battle zones where it's 10 points per zone. Um, it, we've uh, been, been look, checking into it on the VIP, but being New Year's Day, as you can expect, most people had the day off, so we haven't really got an answer yet on whether it's going to be the 10 points per zone like usual or if it's going to be the standard standard zones. My guess is it's going to be these uh, 10, 10 points per zone, just like every other Prime Core event. Uh, so that's my guess of what it's actually going to be because the each prestige is still just 50 points uh, 10 point every 10 points you get a prize you either get prime core shard spark or one of the shard boxes or crystals um, Now if it is going to indeed be the standard battle zones I would expect these points to be higher as well because otherwise um, it's going, you, you can finish the event uh, very super quickly. I mean, a single battle could catch uh, in a zone. Um, well, let's go back. See, uh, if you're battling in zone 10 or higher, a single battle will get you through two or more prestiges. And I don't think that's what they intended. So I'm, I'm thinking it's actually going to be 10 points per battle, uh, like they typically have been in the Prime Core events. Uh, time will tell. But this is, that is what the newsletter said and what I think it really means. Listen to what they mean, not what they say type of thing. Okay, and uh, we had these. Uh, they were shard crystals before. They called them shard boxes, and then that's why I think there's a little mix-up. They may not have corrected everything in the newsletter. It's happened on my stream before where I've gone and forgot to update something. You know, it happens when you reuse content uh, to try to help save some time or whatever. But in the boxes, you've got uh, a chance at uh, an equal chance... At 200 premium shards, 153 star shards, or 100 four star shards. Uh, yes, see. they confirmed. They confirmed what on Discord? They must have just done it because I looked. I looked a little while ago. Um, 
so all right so there's big bronze rim good to see you man um oh i gotta click back over here again okay and uh so that's it for the news uh except to say that they're they're taking a second week off from the official live streams uh due to the holidays but they will be back next thursday on the transformers earth wars social media channels twitch facebook and youtube so now we get to the fun stuff the transformers earth wars rewind 2019 i i guess that's what they call it these things these retrospectives or whatever they call them rewinds or whatever uh so we're going to take a look back through the the major events obviously we had an event every weekend during the year as we have been doing since very early on in the game and but and some of them you didn't get a whole lot. It was just a simple event like this where you just earn some prime core shards. But some weekends, uh, we had some pretty big things happening. We got new bots or we had new features added. Maybe not necessarily in an event, but uh, around that time. So starting off, the, the very first significant event was February 8th when we got Streetwise and Sinner Twin. Now, we didn't, there wasn't anything in January because we had just had an event the last week of December. So the first major event where we got new bots was the uh, weekend of February 8th uh, where we got Streetwise and Sinner Twin, where we start, continued to bring in Protect the Bots and terror cons because we were we knew we were building towards new combiners and everybody had a feeling it was going to be defensor and abominus based on some of the characters we already had in the game and then when we start seeing these two guys a protect the bot and a terror con right next to each other that picture of what combiner would would be coming next started to get a lot clearer uh, so uh, most of these uh, new bots that came in were leaderboards, uh, the standard leaderboards where the top five uh, alliances get the four star, six through 100 get the three star, and if you hit like 50,000 points as an alliance, everybody got the two star. Most of these bots came that way. There were a couple, like this past weekend with Red Alert, where it, you earned crystals and you had a chance for that, so anybody had a chance to get the two, the three, or the four star, or none. And it remains to be seen what I'm going to end up with uh, because we'll be cracking those crystals a little bit later. So, yeah, so we started off with Streetwise and Center Twin. Uh, next up uh, in March, uh, in the event called All R1, we got a couple of raid specific, raid targeted uh, bots. I mean, you can use them in any. Uh, game mode you can use them in any battle but they had a their special ability was targeted to being extra powerful during the midweek raids and we have had a couple of raids on the weekends but not in a while typically the raids have been in the middle of the week and that is cybertron jetfire and cybertron starscream now the cybertron starscream was pretty exciting because that was the first that we saw of a siege uh, Transformers War for Cybertron Siege toy line f inspired character in the game. The Jetfire Cybertron Jetfire, however, was really kind of a a, a mi mi mashup is the word I'm thinking of a mashup of a few different Jetfires and not, not inspired by any particular individual toy. And uh, so this did in, following in the steps of Optimus Prime and Megatron. Now we have. Uh, a second Starscream and a second Jetfire joining the Transformers Earth Wars there uh, and with an additional benefit if you happen to use them in the raids. After that, we got our second uh, dual-use bot, a, a factionless bot, a mercenary, if you will. In the Planetary Consequences event in May, we got impactor now these guys were actually in the chance crystals as well where you had a chance to get two three or four star from any crystal and uh just like gnaw who was the first one where gnaw the exact same character name ability looks everything was available for both autobots and decepticon impactor also is the 
the same way. You know, he is, works ex ex exactly the same way, looks exactly the same way for both Autobots and Decepticon. And if you happen to be using the Factions feature, it is possible for you to have an impactor on both sides of your, uh, for both squads, Autobots and Decepticons, in your one single account. And um, this guy turns out to, turned out to actually be pretty good. Uh, he actually was the um, based on the Transformers Collectors Club version of Impactor, mostly. Uh, it wasn't identical, but it was mostly inspired by that. And that also gave us a clue for another bot who would be coming up later uh, on in uh, part of the uh, Protectabots. Uh, line, or at least it, it was pretty obvious to me that this uh, that, that he was going to be coming. And uh, if you guys have been following along, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, so um, Impactors turned out to be actually, I think, uh, being actually a pretty good uh, bot. Not not super powerful, but still, I think, uh, worthy of inclusion on most uh, teams. Following very shortly on the heels of Impactor, we got Blades and Dirge. And uh, Blades, again, another Protectabot. Uh, so so we, we're very clearly working towards um, Defensor at this point. And uh, if I recall, we were actually ahead on Terracons. We had an extra Terracon versus the Protectabot. So that's why we knew we were going to be getting one of the Protectabots against somebody else other than a Terracon. And Blades was it. Blades and Dirge came out, and they had—they've actually turned out to be actually really, really good. They have um, the, the ability where they, they fly out and they drop kind of a—they they do damage, and they also sort of hack the buildings nearby the, within that zone, and it's uh, to where they actually attack each other. And I think it has a slowing effect as well too. And so Blades obviously was using a similar character model that we've seen before with Alpha Bravo and Vortex and um, Storm Clash, Skyburst, uh, but it's very true to the Combiner Wars toy. So even though they were already using it, um, it, was, it wasn't, uh, not really out of line. Uh, and thank you to Sunspot for subscribing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I gotta do these... Uh, um, uh, alerts a little bit better so I can know whether it's a Twitch or, or or a YouTube alert. I think that was a YouTube because I don't think you can subscribe on Twitch yet. Uh, right now it's actually follows is what you get on Twitch. But anyway, and, and Dirge, of course, uh, was the uh, second of the Coneheads because last year we had gotten Ramjet opposite Goldfire for the Autobots. Uh, we're still looking for Thrust right now, um, but uh, I have a feeling we'll be seeing Thrust sometime in 2020. Now, coming up after this is the first of the non-Newbot uh, characters. It was a new game feature. Uh, we finally got the Titans, Metroplex and Trypticon. And yes, I know the names are reversed. I was expecting to have a uh, images of those guys but i had to just throw up the loading screen because surprisingly uh there were no other images that i was able to find uh in in the short amount of time that i thought about doing this uh, um but yeah so so we we they were added basically as a boss in the midweek raids so instead of just having a bunch of different bases of increasing difficulty level at the highest difficulty now you had at least two of the bases as one of the titans the decepticons obviously fought against metroplex and the um <laughs> the and the autobots fought against trypticons i've got my got my uh thoughts mixed up there and so and one one of the um raid battles they would be in the base mode and the other battle they would be in uh bot mode and, and the i think it was actually probably the best they could have done with these characters because they're just so huge it would have been nice to have been able to use them on your own team but it, they would have just been way too powerful and uh, i think this is probably the best way they could have uh, brought them in uh to be kind of a boss it, uh 
boss battle. Um, I would have pr maybe liked to have seen where they weren't surrounded by a lot of the uh, raid base or whatever, because you know, the top the top alliances don't have any problem with it, but mid to lower alliances uh, sometimes don't even really get to battle the the titans because. Uh, they can't get past the other raid stuff, but still, they're there. And if you want to see more about it, you can. Go, I do did do a video right about this time where I, um, as an Autobot, I had a first look at Trypticon, and I'm pretty sure one of the other uh, YouTubers out there did a video on Metroplex, probably Trios Theory or Skywarp Greer, because they were our, those are the uh, Decepticon uh, YouTubers. So. No word on whether we're going to be getting any additional Titans like Scorponok or Fortress Maximus or Omega Supreme or anything like that. Um, and Omega Supreme, I would think, uh, even though the toy, which is right behind me, was released as a Titan class, I would expect uh, Omega Supreme, they could actually work something to where he's a uh, combiner-like. But we're, we're, we're getting off track from the uh, rewind. Uh <laughs> So yeah, so the Titans did actually uh, join the game finally back in June, right about the three-year anniversary of the game, actually, as a matter of fact. Now after that, we finally completed the Protectobots uh, and the Terracons, confirming essentially that we would be getting Defensor and Abominus as our next combiners. There was a lot of debate on who that fifth protect the bot would be because we already had hotspot first aid streetwise and blades and who would that fifth one be Obvi obviously the g1 fans were hoping for groove because groove was the uh, the little motorcycle was the groove <laughs> yes he was groove he was in defensor uh, in g1 however most of this game has been based on the combiner wars toys and the combiner wars defensor included rook as one of the limbs and back around uh, impactor remember i was saying about how i could tell by his alt mode was a very big clue for rook in that and some of the storylines or whatever i even actually did a prediction video i haven't i haven't done many of those but i just knew for sure in my heart all the clues all the signs were pointing to rook being that and i was proven right i mean i don't i'm not out here trying to say i told you so but well i told you so <laughs> uh it, it's, it's unfortunate the way that they did groove because they did kind of kill groove off uh so it, it would have been nice to have still had him because again even though it was based on the combiner wars toy combiner wars did include groove as a chest minion per se uh, were very similar to Rust Dust with Victorion, but then that would have given another six bot combiner for the Autobots versus five for the Decepticons, and we already had that with uh, Victorion and Menasaur, and I think they wanted to try to stay away from that. So unfortunately, Groove kind of had to go away. Although they could have done so something similar to what they did with Off Road, whereas Off Road was in Combiner Wars, part of Menasaur, he's in the game. And he's still considered a Stunticon, but he's just not part of Menasaur. So they could have probably worked something out with that, but that's not the direction they went. And uh, rest in peace, Groove. Um, but but anyway, back to Rook and Blot. Rook and Blot turned out to be one of the strongest uh, releases in the game this year. I managed to get my hands on a four-star Rook fairly early on, uh, right about the times that the bundles came out. And they are just really fantastic. It's amazing um that they're essentially almost just like rc and nightbird who get a lot of hate or at least did for a while there where they just drop a decoy uh and it, the difference really is the decoy is a little bit stronger has a little bit more health and when it, the decoy uh runs out of health it actually explodes and causes a lot of damage and that is very key it, it's very it's very uh a very big difference um, versus the RC and Nightbird. Now, they definitely did get a lot better also once they added the EMP to those other two ladies. Um, but these guys, just it, there's just something about it that it, that it, it just makes it... Uh, they're, they're, that Yeah, it's, it's, it's that self-destruct. Oktar's got it. The self-destruct is devastating. Uh, even when we first tried it out, uh, there was very high-level uh, bots with a very high-level ability... And uh, I've seen some screenshots. I think if, indeed it was Big Bronze Rims, I think, uh, shared a screenshot where 
The self-destruct is well over 2,000 if you get them up into level 50s on the bot power and level 8 or 9 on the ability, which is enough to cause quite a bit of damage to anything in there. And I'm not quite that strong, but even then, I'm still able to uh, cause a lot of damage. Oh, and Rook's health is better. So, so there's a, multiple things which kind of put these guys a little bit above where RC and Nightbird war, were. So that, that really just shows the potential that those ladies had that they just didn't quite reach. But anyway, Rook and Blot, top-notch bots. If you can get them and if you have them, level them up, use them. You'll be happy that you did. Uh, following on the heels of that, we actually made a return to Beast Wars and welcomed in uh, Rhinox and Tarantulas uh, within the Stampede event. And there was uh, exclamation point was actually there, so you have to you can't just say Stampede. You have to say Stampede. <laughs> you can say it however you want, but uh, <laughs> but uh, in, they're uh, in July, so. Um, it, it, it was uh, pretty nice to, to see these guys come in, seeing a little bit more Beast Wars love uh, a adding to that. I think people were really kind of hoping for a Dinobot, or, uh, and I'm sure people are still hoping for Dinobot to show up. Um, Dinobot almost could be another one of those that could do a, kind of play both sides because he started with the Predacons and then went with the Maximals, although he did that very early on in the show and was more associated with uh, the Maximals. Though uh, Bumblebee says he's waiting, waiting for Rat Trap, so that's another one. And see, and of course, you have to just think about, you know, who can they be paired with? And I thought this was actually a very good pairing, um, because e even though their ability, which was a very unique ability, which we'll touch on in a second, uh, was not really the. I was thinking the Chain Guns of Doom of uh, Rhinox, and then the Tarantulas. He had his. Uh, uh, spider legs would always kind of do a very similar thing and I think they do a similar thing as part of their normal attack but their ability they actually kind of you, you get them and they rush in and then Rhinox grows little vines out of the ground and Tarantulas puts spider webs on top of all of the buildings which causes some damage and it turns that damage actually into health for your teammates uh, and I haven't used them much. So I can't remember if it's everybody on the squad or just those in a certain area. I think it's the, those just in a certain area. But it was a very unique ability. We've never seen it before. They had the additional animations. And I, I thought it was actually really cool to see. And uh, especially because he kind of rushes in, is very true to Rhinox, more so than Tarantulas. Um, but I, I thought it was a great pairing. If, if they had to pick two characters to put, put next to each other, these two were definitely uh, good to be paired together. Uh, WW is asking, weren't they both medic scientists? Uh, yeah, I think Rhinox was sort of the medic. Uh, not specifically. They didn't really have a so-called so medic, but he was more technically, scientifically inclined. And Tarantulas was definitely the mad scientist of the group. Uh, so, so, yeah, so, so that, that, is, that, is, uh, that, that is true. Um, and Oktar, I, I have to agree with you there. I love the spider webs that Tarantulas puts out. And the vines for Rhinox, they're okay. Uh, but definitely the spider webs are, are uh, where, where, it's, where it's at. Um, and first, Monk, I, gotta, I have to admit, I have not seen Beast Machines. I, I, once the Beast Wars proper ended, I, I haven't followed up with anything else. So couldn't really tell you on that one. Okay, after that... We finally got our next combiners. Uh, our speculation was correct uh, for the whole time. Everybody's, is it, it's going to be Defense or an Abominus, right? Defense or an Abominus, Defense or an Abominus. Absolutely. Well, everybody was right. Nobody was fooled. Clearly, it was Defense or and Abominus. And they came, they, they did really come, I, I put them associated with the Rampage event. Now, the, the combiners don't get released with an event like the other bots do. But what I've done, because uh, I'm keeping a list of what, what what events bots come from, is this Rampage was the event where you could earn a Defensor-specific crystal. 
where you were guaranteed a four star of one of the five bots of Defensor or one of the five bots of Abominus, depending on what your main faction was. So that's kind of what where I, I put that with them. They actually came out probably a little bit before that, um, where if you had the bots that you needed at three star or above, you go in the Combiner Lab and you use some Energon and you can form Defensor or Abominus. Now these guys uh, were pretty game changing. And uh, the three-star abilities, the two main abilities, are, are kind of a pretty standard ability. It, it was the, I think it was the first time that we saw that the combiners were able to stack abilities similar to what the triple changers did. Uh, where you could lay down their first ability where Defensor would lay down some fire, Abominus would lay down some acid, which the acid looks way better than the fire. I gotta tell you, I do love the animation on Abominus. And even just the character model, Abominus, uh, Decepticons, you guys won this round as far as aesthetics go, 100%. Um, but but you, you lay that down, and then your second ability, you kind of rush in with a similar ability, like they call it like an electric fire, similar to what Star Saber uh, does you rush in and if you if you hit that while it's still on fire or acid it stacks and adds additional damage and additional stunning in a larger area than you would if it wasn't already there which is so it was really cool to see that it we actually had abilities that could stack with the combiners and then if you have a four star of these guys now this is where it's really cool because if you, you get in there, you, and it works best if you can get the combiner in a crowded area. So the, the, so using the first two abilities works well because one of them is a rush. It gets them into a crowded area, and you hit that four-star ability, it puts a little shield. Well, I say little, but they're, they're big. So they put a shield around the combiner, which actually reflects damage while the shield is active. And then when it's done, it does a little explosion, similar to Rook's um, hologram ability. And then, when they inevitably die, if, if for no other reason than timing out, when your other bots come back, and it is important to drop the bots first, when they come back, the bots have an additional shield on them. So, and it's also, so not only is it the first time that we saw them stack, it's the first time that we saw that the combiners added additional abilities to your other bots and i thought that was just absolutely fantastic to see and um i gotta tell you since i got defensor at four star i haven't used any other combiners and i'll be the first one to tell you i love volcanicus i use volcanicus all the time i love victorian i use the victorian all the time superion i used when i had them and then once the other ones came out i didn't really haven't really used superion much anymore and optimus maximus good in the combiner outpost but we'll get to that uh but but yeah ever since i've had got defensor out there i've really really enjoyed using defensor and uh, if i obviously the same thing would say be true for abominus if i happen to be a decepticon so these guys are definitely bots worth uh chasing down if you're able to Speaking of the Combiner Beacon, right about the right after the we got Defensor and Abominus, if you happen to be at headquarters level 16, which is pretty deep in the game, so if you're early on, this won't be available to you. Um, but but if you're at headquarters level 16, you got the ability to build a Combiner Beacon. Now this was not a cheap thing to build. You had to have pretty much full alloy and pretty much full energon. Which for most people, it's probably not a problem. Uh, it, it, for most people at this level anyway, it's probably not that much of a problem to actually uh, collect that amount. Uh, but once you put that in there, I think it has a standard 14 day build time. Once you get that, you can actually engage, uh, you can place any of your combiners into that beacon and you charge it with ore 13. You can see on the screen there, uh, it costs 10 of the ore 13 to charge it and you can actually add, extend the charge with an additional 10 and the way it works is you choose one of your combiners and you choose the ability that you want it and you assign them now while that combiner is assigned to the combiner beacon they are not available for use any other time which is why optimus maximus as you see i have him there charged is is a, is an excellent one especially if you have him at a four star because he shoots out 
five or six different rockets which it, it, if the person who is attacking you sent their whole squad most of their team is going to be hit by that and stunned allowing the rest of your defenses more time to hit them without taking damage in return unless one of them happens to be hotspot or tantrum uh <laughs> But uh, so, so yes, um, Optimus Maximus, especially at the four star, is an outstanding combiner to be in the beacon. And one of the things I do love about the combiner beacon is the fact that it shoots a ray of light straight up into the air. Uh, you can see it there off to the side there. And um, very cool. Uh, and to be honest with you, I forget to charge it quite a bit, although I did manage to have it charged just the other day and was attacked by somebody. They came in. And they had their whole squad there, and he came out. Of course, I was masked as a Decepticon, so Bruticus uh, came out, stunned most of the squad, and with the, my other outpost bots and everything else there, I ma it managed to help me win the defense. So definitely I can endorse a four-star Optimus Maximus or uh, Bruticus as the combiner beacon bot. <laughs> that just sounds funny to hear. Combiner Beacon Bot. Uh, okay. C. Taylor, how's it going? Welcome. Thanks for joining the stream here over on Twitch. Um, okay, let's let's move on from there. Now, this this guy was pretty interesting. On the inside, on September twentieth, we got Punch Counter Punch, which is really cool because, uh, it's. It's literally the same guy who has two different robot forms. So in terms of the game, it's two separate characters. So it's not quite the same as Impactor or Naw, but kind of is. Because it is indeed the same guy, but he does have two different looks. Whether he's working for the Autobots as Punch or for the Decepticons as Counterpunch. And this guy was obviously uh, inspired by the Power of the Primes Amazon exclusive version of Punch Counterpunch, which we got... I think it was earlier in the uh, 2019, and it, it is indeed an ac an excellent figure, and I was very happy to see them using that model. Um, so, um, and, and it's interesting when they use because you know when you uh, have the bots use their ability, most of them will transform into their alternate mode now or their. Every bot has a preferred mode. Like the Dinobots, a lot of the Dinobots prefer their beast mode. So when they do use their ability, they will transform into robot mode and then back into the beast mode. Whereas most of the other bots that are in the robot mode, and they'll transform into their car or jet or whatever. This guy, he's either punch. It's, we'll use the Autobots for an example. He's punched as he's going through attacking or whatever. When you use his ability, he doesn't transform into a car. He transforms into counter punch. Because what he's basically doing is he's going undercover. So now none of the defenses attack him because, oh, hey, that's our guy. That's Counterpunch. We're not going to attack him. But in the meantime, he's actually going lobbing out stuns at all of the defenses too. And before he transforms back into Punch. You can substitute also Counterpunch versus Punch um, if you're a Decepticon. Uh, so I thought that was really cool to see where they incorporated the double agent nature of this character as his ability so very cool very well done great job uh, on this character for the um uh punch a counter punch <laughs> bumblebee saying combiner bacon bot <laughs> great now you're getting me hungry talking about bacon we're not gonna we're not gonna do that uh th wasn't there a thing in the vip back when it was in band where everybody was like do doing something with bacon or whatever I don't know. I, I, anyway. <laughs> now the next big feature, it's kind of a feature, more of just, not, not a whole new feature, but it's a new level of a feature that we already had. Came about uh, the week after we got Punch and Counter Punch, and it is called G-Metal. G, uh, and it is a new level of power cores. We already had the bronze power cores, the silver power cores, and the gold power cores and of course the prime cores which are kind of a league of their own uh but the, the normal power cores you have bronze silver and gold uh as the um the levels you know gold is the high, strongest silver middle and bronze is the weakest and they each have different levels that you could take them to and obviously at the same level the the better 
metal uh, is, a, is a stronger power core. Now, since the prime cores were starting to run out, some people were starting to get to the point where they collected all of the prime cores, meaning these prime core shard events, like what's this weekend, would be worthless to them because why are they going to be earning prime cores if they have nothing to spend them on? So now what they've done is we've got a new level on top of gold called G Metal. And there is a history to the G Metal. If you go back and watch the video where these were first announced, it's in the video called The G Metal. Uh, it actually talks about there is history to this. I believe in the Japanese uh, G1 Transformers cartoon, something about Scorponok, I think, it, uh, was collecting this metal. It's a very strong metal. And um, so, so these are the cores. Now, even though you can spend your prime core shards on a chip, as shown here for either a bot or a building G metal power core, it is still possible to randomly get a G metal power core from duplicate bots. And I've, I've seen them come from duplicate four stars. I've seen them come from duplicate three stars. I'm not sure if they come from duplicate two stars or not, the three and four star definitely you can get a G metal power core. They're pretty rare, uh, but they do happen. Um, but uh, again, if you have prime core shards and you've collected all of the prime cores that you want, or you just want to, you would rather ha take your chances with the G metal core. You can spend your prime core shards on a G metal chip of your choice, either bot or building, and um, it will allow you to the space bridge will pull and you're going to get a randomly selected version of either a bot or a building core you can't pick which one you want you can just pick which type but e even so it's very strong cores uh much better than the gold and it's uh, worth using if you have them uh first monk is asking about stasis mine cores uh i've heard those are coming and I believe the game shows that uh, give, to give you the ability to add a power core to the stasis mine, but they have not announced them officially yet, uh, or at le least not what they are going to be, and certainly have not released any new stasis mine cores into the game. Uh, but they're definitely coming because they've already uh, enabled that in the uh, in the game if you click on the stasis mine. Okay, we're, we're uh, <laughs> running, running down and getting into the holiday time almost. Uh, leading up into Halloween, uh, we started a G.I. Joe event, which it was it had mixed reception. Some people really liked it. Some people were like, keep your darn G.I. Joes out of my Transformers game. Uh, but, you know, we got them. And with that uh, G.I. Joe crossover, we got new versions of Hound and Soundwave. And this version of Soundwave actually transforms. Uh, so we got is the Hound Vamp. Um, I don't remember what that stands for. And the Soundwave Hiss. Uh, so Hound turns into a Jeep still, although it's bigger. He's, you can see he's got the beefier wheels. He's actually much bigger in game as well. And Soundwave turns into the co the famous Cobra Hiss tank uh, there. Uh, um, so and they've got new new abilities which we haven't seen before. And um, it's, it's, although it's kind of a mashup of some ab abilities that we ha have seen before, because it's very similar to the Optimus Primal in Beast Wars Megatron abilities, where they go and they tell, it, tell all of the other uh, bots on the team to target the defenses. And at the same time, within a certain zone, I believe, or I'm I don't, not sure if it's the entire uh, base. I think it's just within the zone. Uh, I did just get the four star hound vamp, but I've just been leveling him. I haven't used him much yet, so uh, I'm not real sure. But uh, it, it adds a glass gas effect. So, wh whereas the Beast Wars Megatron and Optimus Primal adds an additional health shield to your bots, these guys add a uh, health debuff to the defenses that, to, that your bots can then uh, take advantage of and try to help destroy those other defenses a little bit quicker. So. So yeah, it's it very cool to see these guys. And if you go look at them in the uh, the showroom in the hangar, uh, you can see Cobra Commander and Duke from the Joes standing next to them. And we even had G.I. Joe music playing in the background. Uh, although the G.I. Joe music has uh, take, take, gone away. 
Uh, so maybe maybe they only had the license for the G.I. Joe music for a short amount of time. Um, when did this live start? We started at 8 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday. So if you, if you hit that follow button, if you haven't already, um, and turn on your notifications, uh, you should get it. I usually been starting about 10 minutes early just to get people here. And um, but we'll, uh, you should get a notification there. So I think that's all I got to say about these guys for now. Next up, the uh, second of the G.I. Joe bots uh, is... Um, Jetfire Sky Striker and Skywarp Night Raven. So this is the second new Jetfire we got this year because we get we already had the Jetfire from the original game uh, or from the start of the game, and we had the Cybertron Jetfire early in the year, and we close out the year with yet another Jetfire this time in the form of the GI Joe Sky Striker Jet, uh, Jetfire Sky Striker here, and and instead of being paired with. Uh, Starscream, as typically happens, they paired him with Skywarp, who took, takes the form of the Cobra Night Raven. Now, that's an actually very good um, choice, since the Night Raven was a, was a black jet, and Skywarp is the Des Decepticon's resident black jet. It makes perfect sense for this to be Skywarp instead of Starscream, who is typically paired with Jetfire. Now, these guys... Um, again, I haven't had a chance to use them very much. I did recently just get the four-star Sky Striker Jetfire, uh, but they're very similar to the normal Jetfire. Um, although Skywarp is slightly is quite different because Sky Skywarp had a, a different ability, but but Jetfire is kind of the same. So we're talking about the Jetfire Starscream ability, just a standard airstrike where you go and launches four or five rockets at a single target. They still do that, but there's also a little bit of an area of effect around around that one target. Plus, also, while they are in the air, and this is this is key with all those anti-air laser turrets, which kill my swoop and Tigerhawk. Uh, they're almost useless if anybody's got anti-air on there. But these guys are invisible when they're on those uh, ability runs. Uh, so that's actually key. Now, when I was actually leveling up my Sky Striker, I noticed as he was walking around, every so often he would turn invisible even as he's walking around. So I'm not sure if that's an intentional thing or maybe it's a four-star thing or whatever, but, but that is can actually be uh, uh, a benefit as well. So just being able to make that strafing run without taking any damage in the air, unlike any of your other air bots, that's, that's actually pretty good. Uh, so... Uh, pretty, pretty good, pretty good uh, airbot uh, is what what I'm trying to get at, and um, I, I think one of the reasons why I'm tripping over my words trying to find something good to say is uh, Big Bronze Rim, as usual, is hitting the nail on the head. He's a good flyer, but hardly anybody uses flyers anymore, probably because of that uh, that anti-air uh, laser turrets make it make it almost impossible to have any success with that. Plus, there's so many other possible teams that you can build with combinations and stuff like that that don't require uh, the use of jets. Um, now, I didn't cover it in the slides, but uh, there was a... Oh, oh, let me, before we get off of this, uh, Sky Striker Jetfire was paired with Snake Eyes, and Skywarp Night Raven uh, is paired with Storm Shadow, the ninjas. So apparently the ninjas fly jets too. Uh, so the third bot from the G.I. Joes was not actually a new bot, uh, Viper was already decoed for G.I. Joe from the very beginning because the Combiner Wars toy of uh, Viper was already basically a Cobra Rattler and had the combination G uh, Cobra and Decepticon symbol. So they just kind of went with it and gave him Baroness as a partner. And they also redecoed Power Glide, slapped a G.I. Joe sticker on his wings and called it a day and let him ride around with uh, Scarlet. Uh, so no, no change to their abilities. Well, I guess Viper did have a change, but it was unrelated to the G.I. Joe thing. Um, but yeah, so so we've got three G.I. Joe bots. Two of them were new. Uh, and and then the G.I. Joe event ended, and uh, many Earth Wars players rejoiced. <laughs> because they're like, oh, finally the G.I. Joe stuff is over. Uh <laughs> Uh, and uh, we closed out the year just this past weekend, which we're going to be cracking these uh, crystals here in just a few minutes, hopeful, hoping to find Red Alert here. Uh, we got Red Alert, our good friend Gen 1 Red Alert, usually stops by the streams 
and, and um, you know, he lives nearby. Go visit him. And uh, unfortunately, at the last I heard, his namesake did not come to him from any of those crystals, which is a travesty. The guy's name is Red Alert, and he didn't get a Red Alert bot. So that's one of the drawbacks to having the Chance Crystals is sometimes you can walk away with all three of them. Sometimes you can walk away with nothing. And uh, But uh, so we did have Red Alert. We're seeing a, a return to the Siege stylings because this Red Alert is very much inspired by the Siege version of Red Alert. And uh, they said as much in the stream, but it's pretty obvious if you if you have or have seen the Earth or the... Uh, War for Cybertron Siege Red Alert uh, toy. Uh, it's clear, although it's it's a pretty standard Red Alert figure. We showed him off with the Masterpiece. It's right in line with the Masterpiece uh, Red Alert as well. And then, of course, we've got the counterpart over there, Run Amuck, which uh, is a character we haven't seen a whole lot in Transformers um, uh, for a while. I mean, they, I think Run, Run Amuck and his twin brother, Red Runabout, are the brothers? I guess. Yeah, we'll go with it. They're brothers. Um, did show up early in the IDW run back uh, however long ago it was, eight, nine, ten years ago. Um, and, and then it kind of disappeared. Um, but this version of Runamuck is actually based around the Transformers Collectors Club release, and we showed that off there a couple of weeks ago. And um, they've got a pretty decent ability, which is escaping me right now. They, they, they rush in... And oh, I guess we'll have to go 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 look go uh, look look at it. Um, I'm trying to th try to think. Help me out, guys. <laughs> oh, and I don't even have it in my game yet. So uh, they they add it, it, it rushes in and adds an ability for other people in, for the, for your other bots in the game. Oh my goodness, I completely forgot. Uh, Oktar saying, with the four-star success I had on the last stream, I might get multiple four-star red alerts tonight. Well, let's. I only need one. Um, but yes, that last crystal cracking stream was, was quite amazing. Damage reduction for the team by 40% on the four-star. Thank you. Uh, so, so yeah, they add, they add protection for the bots. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Could, could just could not remember that for the life of me and stun immunity that's that's very important because my bots are getting stunned all the time and even though i know it happens all the time it still angers me every time i see my bots are stunned with uh you yeah, know whether it's a uh, death saurus or thundercracker or briefly from a shock tower or stasis mine because it almost always happens okay i'm ready to go i'm going to hit this ability oh it's stunned you know Oh, and I, I believe that was it. Yep, that brings us all around the horn. So there you go. There is our Transformers Earth Wars Rewind 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I uh, got a lot of positive feedback when I did it last year, uh, so I wanted to go ahead and do that again. And I had a little bit more time this year to pull it together. Last year, I kind of just threw up the thumbnails that we had, which I thought worked pretty well. Um, but, uh, we did that. So, so now, um, we run about is definitely coming. They said as much, it's not going to be right away. It might be a few weeks, uh, down. And, uh, I, I know there's, uh, been, a, been a request to speculate on what new bots could be coming or at least which bots I'd like to see. And, uh, that's a topic for another video, uh, we'll do. But, uh, for right now, since, uh, we're, we're uh, running a little short on time for what we usually do. Let's go ahead and go and crack some crystals. Because like I said, we do have these red alert crystals. What are they called? Let's see if I can... The speedster crystals. Chance to earn two, three, or four star red alert plus some crystal shards. We did open four of them during that last video and just got shards. No red alerts. So we're hoping to find... I'd be happy with just at least a two star... Um, but obviously the three and the four star are happy. We got 20 chances. Let's get to it. Oh, right out of the gate. There's the three star. Right out of the key. Can you look at that? Right out of the gate. 
You got the three star. I would, I would have been floored if that last row lit up. That that would have been amazing. Okay, so we've got the three star red alert. Still got 19 to go. So, so there's the uh, got some premium shards, some more four star shards. Three star shards. Three stars. Premiums. Looks like we've got a couple of extra crystals to claim. Major Dre got all the star bots. Very cool. Congrats, my friend. That's hard to do. I've only managed to do that, I think, with Tiger Hawk. I had I have gotten lucky with the three star. Obviously, we just got red alert. Cup and punch, I believe I got the three stars as well. There's four star shards. More three stars. Four stars. Oh, I thought about it for a second. I thought we were going to at least get the two star there. Oktar still hasn't gotten a four star in these style events. Yeah, it's hard to do, man. But I do like the fact that everybody at least has a chance. And you don't have to be just one of the top five alliances, who which you already pretty much know as soon as a, before it even starts. But we do run the risk of not getting anybody. More shards, and last one. More shards. So out of 24 crystals, I pulled the three-star red alert, and that was it. So I got really lucky there um, with that. So we've got a premium crystal, and we have a three-star crystal. Pretty close to a four-star, but I don't think we'll get there, even if these are both three-star dupes. Premium crystal. Gives us a snarl. And this three-star crystal gives us a wheel jack. And that, that last one there is just a free crystal, but I won't waste your time. Oh, look, we've got story. Tracks. I don't know if having red alert around is a good thing or a bad thing. I know what you mean, Tracks. The fact that he suspects everything and everyone has its plus side. Kind of makes surprise attacks a thing of the past, but... He's on high alert all the time, Cosmos. You keep expecting that hair trigger of his to be the surprise attack. Yeah, one rash judgment and we're suddenly the collateral damage in the whole paranoid equation. It's hard to do that underwater voice of Sea Spray. Shh, zip it, Sea Spray. Here he comes. What? Why the sudden silence? Were you talking about me? No. He said, like a liar. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, look, red alert. We all appreciate that nothing, however microscopic, escapes your attention. But it's putting us all on edge. Just this morning, you sounded the auto base alarm four times. Once for a mouse. It could have been a very small beast mode predic predicon. But it wasn't. And if in doubt, squish, don't mobilize a whole platoon of heavily armed Autobots on the off chance. You can't be too careful. And yesterday, you nearly took out a communication satellite with a surfaced air missile. Well, it looked at me in a funny way. <laughs> Seriously, Red Alert, you gotta dial it back a notch. Just a notch. Right, right. I'll try. Wait, what's that? I smell fuel exhaust. 
Enemy attack! Enemy attack! Uh, this is going to be a very long tour of duty. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, very good. Uh, it's so crazy. Uh, we, we said it uh, when we've been talking about uh, Red Alert the, the last couple of streams. I still think it's hilarious that one episode, that one episode where he had a glitch. It wasn't even his actual personality. He just had a glitch which made him be paranoid. But because that was the really the only time he was in the spotlight, that glitched paranoid personality became red alerts personality for the rest of time but uh you know it's it's still it's a uh, it's good you, you gotta have something if he's just a generic security bot then he may as well be prowl uh, the only difference would that maybe he wouldn't flip tables or something but even the table flipping thing is just uh from the idw so so yeah there you go oh you like the cosmos yeah thanks i i yeah, when I'm when I'm saying it, I think I sound like Cosmos too. I I, I don't know if I actually go and compare myself to Cosmos. I, I don't I don't I probably won't, but uh, I do try. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I try to do the I try to do the voices. Obviously, I'm not a voice actor, and you know, e even an actual voice actor, even if even if the person doing the voice acting does all of these voices, they would probably have a hard time switching between all of them in a setting such as this. I would guess. Like, uh, like if you had Frank Welker, the the genius that he is, trying to do a conversation between Megatron, Soundwave, and Wheelie, where they're all talking back and forth, he might be able to pull it off because he's he's that great. But I would bet even he would probably prefer. You know what? Let's do these in separate takes. I'll do them. I'll lay down the Megatron track. I'll lay down the Soundwave track. Then I'll lay down the Wheelie track. But. Uh, or even like in uh, even Peter Cullen in the uh, Transformers movie where he's got Optimus Prime and Ironhide talk the whole scene Optimus Prime and Ironhide talking back and forth with each other. I would bet you he laid down an Optimus Prime track and then he laid down an Ironhide track and didn't actually uh, talk back and forth um, uh, with within the voices because I would, even if you could do it I would think it, I think it would be preferable to not have to you know so. Let's see what you guys are talking about in the chat. So uh, leaderboard events are fun in moderation. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I agree. Leaderboard events are, are good to have. Uh, it gets people excited, gets people competitive, and, and uh, brings in the money, which helps keep the keep the game going. Uh, it, but I do like that they throw in the chance chance crystals every so often. Although I think the, the rates on, the, on this one from all the reports that I've seen, and even uh, I usually get at least a two-star uh a few two stars out of 24 crystals it's, it's surprising to only get lucky with a three star one time so i i think i think the rates uh were pretty poor on this one so um but gen generally they're uh they're they're uh generally they're welcome but uh yeah i i would have i definitely would have been disappointed if i if i didn't get lucky on that one crystal and, and get that three star so I, I definitely would feel your pain, everybody. If if you did, if you didn't get red alert, I, I definitely feel your pain. Um, fun fact: I never got two star swoop out of the event because it, that that was the time where I actually first came over to non toxic gamers. I was in some other alliance which just nobody played, and uh, the, we there was we, there was just no chance we were going to get even to the fifty thousand or sixty thousand that you needed to get um, swoop. And uh, so I started looking for another alliance, and uh, you know, Apoc found me. He's the founder of the Non-Toxic Gamers. It, it's it's more than just an alliance. It's uh, actually a whole movement. Actually, we, we uh, started started up a, a non-profit to help uh, combat uh, toxicity in gaming. Uh, so I I can't remember what the website is because uh, 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 we're going through like a, a little bit of some changes or whatever. Uh, but um, so he said, yeah, come on over. And uh, but by the time I came over, they had already gotten the two star swoop. But we did manage to finish in the top 100, so I got a three star swoop out of that event. Uh, but no, but no, um, but no two star. So 
All right. So, well, that that's it for the uh, Transformers Earth Wars. And I think we're going to go ahead and, and cut it off for, for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the Transformers Rewind. We got lucky with a uh, pulling that three-star red alert out of those crystals. And uh, briefly touched on the Prime Core uh, event coming up this weekend. Um, for for any, anybody still on Twitch, hang, uh, hang around. I'm going to do my sign-off, but hang around. And uh, we'll hang out for a little bit. Uh, after this yeah but for everybody on youtube uh, i'm engineer hoist keep rolling my friends and we'll see you next time